Hi everyone. Um, I wanted to do a quick little video uh, talking about uh, arc length parameterizations and do a little calculation to describe one of the key features of arc length parameterizations and why we like arc length parameterizations as a consequence. And so um, let's go ahead and consider a function. So we've got real number line here. And let's go ahead and uh, parameterize, we'll, we'll take a parameter on this number line, parameter t. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and consider a function on this number line here, f. So f of t is going to take, you know, some subset of this number line into a curve. Okay. And uh, so what we can do is we can think of, you know, as t moves on the number line here, it traces out this curve. And so the um, thing about this is that it may trace out the curve at varying speeds, right? So it may go fast in one area and slower in another area. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new parameterization. This parameterization will have a property that it will trace out this image here with the same speed all the way throughout the curve, okay? And so what we have to do is we have to introduce, like I said, a new parameterization, and it's what's called the arc length parameterization of this curve. So what we have to do is let's, let's construct a new number line here. Uh, I'm actually going to move this number line down here. Let me, let me rearrange my diagram here. All right, so we've got f of t. We've got our first number line here, this thing has a variable t. Now we've got some new number line down here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we can take this new number line and we can define it. We can define a parameter on here by constructing a variable out of the arc length of this function here. Okay. So the arc length of the function, we're going to give it two names. First name is lambda of t. And so lambda of t is defined by taking the integral from some fixed point. So we just have to choose some point here on this number line. Uh, fortunately, what we do doesn't depend on the choice of this point. And so by choosing a point, we're not sort of introducing any, um, you know, any problems there because uh, the point we choose doesn't matter in the end. Okay. Um, so without loss of generality. All right, fix a point here, um, and uh, what we can do then is take the arc length from this point up to some new value of t, and the arc length is, of course, given by the integral of the norm of the velocity. Oops. Okay. And so um, what we've got here then is a function that maps the parameter t into a new real number lambda of t, and this describes the amount of arc length that you've traversed along this curve. This is f of t sub so zero here, and this tells you the amount of arc length that you've traversed on this curve going from t sub zero out to t. So that's f of t there. Okay, and so we're going to give this, so the function that describes that amount of arc length is lambda of t, and we'll give it the new parameter name s. Okay, so we've got this guy, um, this would be our zero point here, and then lambda of s, okay, lambda of t rather, is going to be some new value out of this new number line here. Okay. So, once we have this, what we can do is we can express the original parameter t in terms of this new parameter s. Okay, so the way we do that, obviously, is we're just going to invert here. And we notice that uh, if lambda maps t to s, then lambda inverse of s returns a t, a t value. Okay? And using this, we can now express f of t in terms of this new parameter s. Right? So we've got f of t can really be thought of as f of lambda inverse of s. Okay? 
And now, this is where the fun starts to happen because now we've reparameterized f in terms of this new variable s, right? And so let's go ahead and uh, just compute the uh, let's go ahead and compute the uh, derivative of f with respect to s, okay? And so obviously in this case, uh, dds of f just gives us f prime of our parameter times the derivative of this inside piece here. And to compute the derivative of, of this guy, what we notice is that uh, lambda inverse of s prime can be computed using the fact that lambda composed with lambda inverse is equal to 1, or is, is, is the identity function. Okay? So we've got, let's take the derivative of this relation here, lambda after lambda inverse of s. This thing, just computing using the chain rule, gives us lambda prime of lambda inverse of s times the derivative, and this, this is what we want here, of lambda inverse of s. And remember that uh, this guy, lambda after lambda inverse of s, is really just s. And so by taking the derivative of this guy, we're taking the derivative of s, which obviously is 1, right? So what we have then is that 1 is equal to this expression here. And so that allows us to solve for lambda inverse of s prime. We see lambda inverse of s prime is really just 1 over uh, lambda prime of lambda inverse of s. And so what we can do then is we can actually compute the value of this thing because we know um, the definition of lambda is in terms of this integral that we've defined, right? So, let's recall that uh, lambda of t is given by this integral here. And so lambda prime then is just the norm of f of t, okay? And so lambda prime of lambda inverse of s is really just equal to, um, or sorry, let's let's do this one over business. So lambda inverse of s prime is really just one over lambda inverse of, sorry, lambda prime of lambda inverse of s and lambda prime we know is just the norm of f of the variable norm of f of the variable and so what we end up with is that the derivative of this guy with respect to s is really just uh, f prime of lambda inverse of s divided by, or x, we're multiplying by this lambda inverse of s prime, which we found is 1 over uh, the norm. So we're di dividing by the norm of f of lambda inverse. And what we notice is that, hey, look at this. This is really just a function, a vector value function divided by the norm of that guy. And so this thing is just a unit vector in the direction of the um, original derivative. So it's a unit vector in the direction of f prime, right? And if that's a unit vector, then what we notice is that if we were to take the arc length of this thing, since it's a unit vector, we're just taking the integral of 1, and um, obviously the integral of 1 is going to give us um, that as you increase your parameter by one unit, you're just tracing out one unit of arc length, right? So um, nice little 
um, derivation there of, uh, yeah, the arc length parameterization of f and a proof that when you parameterize with respect to arc length, the arc length parameterization traces out one unit of arc length for every unit that the parameter has traced. So um, that'll be it. Thanks.